What up, Twills? Happy Blue Friday to you. Well, here we are. It's, uh, it's that time of the season where it's pretty much do or die. We're sitting here six and four, third place technically in the division, although we're tied record-wise with the 49ers. And we got the Cardinals on Sunday. And I guess before we get too much into the Cardinals game, we gotta look one last look back at the at the Chiefs game. Uh, the best way to sum up that game was just missed opportunities. Um, we should have won that game. Then again, I say that about almost every game except maybe even the, except maybe the San Diego game that we should have won that game because it just came down to one or two plays, and it was. It felt a lot like the Dallas game because, you know, I remember the Dallas game, you felt like through most of that game we were just getting beat. They were like running all over us and and you felt like, how the heck are we still in this game when you feel like you've been dominated? But um, we had a couple of turnovers that kept it close um, despite the fact that Jamal Charles was running all over us. And, you know, we had more than one chance to win that game. Um, I've said it from the beginning, my, the emphasis to repeat the Super Bowl champions as I said it was going to be third down efficiency and red zone. And once again, particularly red zone in that game killed us. Ironically, we're in Arrowhead Stadium where it's all red. We were no good in the red zone. And uh, we had a chance at the uh, end of the first half to score a touchdown. And uh, Jermaine Curse. Uh, Love the guy, but just, this year he's just been dropping a few too many passes, and he had that one. It was thrown just perfectly, and all he had to do was catch the ball, secure the ball, he would have two feet in, touch down, take the lead to the half. But we didn't, and that really that was that became the margin. I mean, that that touchdown instead of a, a field goal instead of a touchdown was the margin through so many to, to the end of the game. Four points versus uh, you know we get the touchdown and and. Uh, we're, we're ahead, you know. So, um, so there's that one. Then, of course, the um, the fourth and one. Everyone's been talking about the fourth and one call. We should have gone. We should have kicked the field goal. Uh, pass interference. Bad play. My thoughts, personally, during that at that point of the game when it was fourth and one, um, I actually didn't mind them going for it. I think part of it was the fact that it still felt like we weren't stopping them on defense and I felt like I didn't know if uh, we'd get this chance to be this close again. So I, I didn't mind the call uh, to go for it. I was not happy with the throw, with the, with the change to the, to the play call they eventually ran. If you notice, right before the, the play that actually ran, Seattle had a different formation and then Kansas City called no, timeout and I, I like that the formation line. that kind of trips I through receivers on the left side and, and Russell started to roll out left so he's on the move. It's what I would have wanted them to do, but then Casey called a timeout, and then they changed it. I don't know if they should have changed it. Yeah, obviously, they probably thought, well, Kansas City's looking for it now. We can't run that play. And instead, they went with that, uh, with the corner route or the, the fade route. And I really hated that play. The moment he threw it, I thought, this is no good. And of course, he got bumped, and then he didn't even look like he got close to even try. He didn't even try for the ball. He was just kind of bumped, kind of flailed, and then it was that. Um, a couple things since that point, uh, I actually having analyzed it and hearing some different analysis of that play, um, it actually wasn't a bad play call by design, but Kansas City actually played it pretty smart because it was like a, a Baldwin and the and the and Richardson did a cross route where they're supposed to try to kind of interfere, got the other two guys to kind of cross up, and that should hopefully free free Baldwin in the corner. But what happened was. Richardson's defender went off of him and then covered Baldwin. Well, I shouldn't say cover him. He then bumped him and uh, diverted him from his route so he couldn't even get close to where he needed to be. If the ball looked for to be overthrown, you know, we'll never know because we never see what he would have ended up. But um, he might have had a chance had he been able to just beeline it to the spot. And as it turns out, the NFL actually apologized and admitted they messed up that call. So. Apparently, for all of us, uh, and all of you who are really crying foul for pass interference, well, you guys were right. It was pass, pass interference, and we should have gotten a first down and fresh set of downs to, uh, you know, we would have scored. We would have ran it in probably and scored the first rushing touchdown at that point against the Chiefs, and we would have taken the lead. Again, everything comes down to, to this, and, uh, but 
it just didn't, the brakes didn't come our way, and so here we are. Um, you know, but you hate to put it all on the refs because you know it's always a bad thing to put the you know, the game in the, their hands, especially when it's the Super Bowl from 2005, 2006. Uh, who's calling that game? Who did us no favors back then? Same guy. So ironically, they screwed up then. They screwed up here. Admittedly so. But you know, even after that, we had to stop. We got the ball in good field position. Uh, and then there was that uh, we were driving, doing well, and then they got that delay of game that f that made them lose five yards instead of a second and five or four or something like that. It became second and ten, and just and that eventually led to the fourth and one that we didn't get, and yeah, you know, <laughs> painful to recall all that. So again, it was just little things, little things like that just add up to a four-point loss. But. Um, so takeaways from that, you know, I think it's become pretty obvious. We've discussed and joked here um, about why Wilson's been struggling. And the bottom line is, you know, you, I think people have just quickly written off the Percy trade and release and kind of said, well, good riddance, we're done with him. But the reality is, is we ended up losing two number one receivers. We lost Golden Tate because we wanted to get Percy and then we lost Percy. So we ended up with nobody, uh, you know, and at the sacrifice of money and trades, you know, uh, draft choices, and ended up with basically our second and third and fourth receivers and a bunch of rookies all forced to move up. And you know we're we're, we're trying to have you know, Baldwin is our number one receiver and he's really a number two, maybe a number three on another team. And you know so I guess we shouldn't be too shocked how this is all you know turning out passing game wise. We just don't have you know, the number one anymore. So obviously I think they'll address that need, you know, in the off scene or, or, or at least try to develop the guys we have and see what we got. But we're gonna have to work with what we have because it's not gonna change much between now and the end of the season. So that's something that's gonna have to be addressed eventually. But uh, that's obviously a glaring issue. And then, you know, uh, our rush defense was, was, was really bad, obviously. Um, now, granted, KC is a good rushing team. Jamal Charles is, is really good, so I can't take that away. But this first game, seeing without uh, me being in there, and I, I knew that that was going to make a difference. I didn't realize how big of a difference. I thought maybe we'd be able to make up for it. But, uh, you know, me being uh, definitely is is a big is a big loss, and I think we're going to be feeling it for the rest of the season. It's going to make it tough against any team that likes to run. And, uh, you know, Thomas, uh, I love the guy, of course. I think he's, he's the, the leader of the, t of the uh, defense, but, you know, he sometimes goes in there and tries to lay the wood down with a shoulder and doesn't wrap up. And sometimes he's got to get back to fundamentals, tackling, you know, wrapping guys up. I'm always yelling, wrap up, wrap up, because it drives me crazy when guys try to just lay them out and not put their arms around them, and then they, they roll out for another five yards. It drives me crazy. Um, but that should hopefully improve because we'll be getting Wagner back, I think. They say he's probably going to be back in this game, and that'd be huge because he was, uh, if I have to believe he was a leading tackler at the time until he left in that Dallas game. So having him back will bring back some, uh, will make up for some of our rushing defense deficiencies. So that's a good thing. But let's switch to the other uh, good things about this game. Um, we, we did get turnovers, you know, so really one thing that kept us in there, we had two turnovers, two fumbles, and, and you know, on, on the same side as I'm cr criticizing Earl, he also made, you know, a couple awesome plays there that led, that led to turnovers. So, you know, you take the good with the bad, but, uh, you know, those turnovers did keep us in the game, we, and we're gonna have to keep doing that in order to, to win down the stretch. Um, and, of course, our running game was awesome. Uh, Beast mode was was in full uh, full blast. Russell doing his thing as well, and, and it, I didn't know why we didn't rush it at, at the at that fourth and you know leading up to that fourth and one at the goal line. I don't think we ran the ball hardly at all during that last uh, few plays. Puzzling, but um, hopefully um, uh, we will get that continue to keep the rushing game going because I'm um, going to need it, going to need it. So let's switch over to um, the Cardinals.
Uh, first of all, have you guys seen the Rivals episode? You must have because uh, it's blown up. Um, it's it's on YouTube. It's it's doing fairly well. I, I guess typical for for my YouTube channel. But man, got got it on Facebook and KJR on Facebook, our, our local sports radio station, 950 KJR put it on, uh, and it like last like the Broncos video blew up again. And last I checked, it was like uh, I don't know 150,000, and they just posted it yesterday afternoon. So it's great. It's fun. It's great that so many people are uh, are, are getting to see it and uh, using it as motivation to get hyped up for this Sunday because our season, I believe, comes down to this Sunday. I mean, last week was like I, like a playoff game almost, but we really had a little bit of slack, but really no, because of that loss and, and Arizona winning, we have to win this game. I mean, I believe technically, even if we don't win this game, we're not technically out of it, but realistically, I think we will be. So we have to win this. To me, this is like a... Uh, Six game, six playoff games in a row that we just have to win. Um, so, and, and we're at home. I mean, we got every reason. We're like a, a, an animal backed into the corner, you know. Uh, and so, I think the crowd, everything will be just at a, at a frenzied fever, like it hasn't been all season. At least it better be. And uh, hopefully that'll that'll help us um, get the edge. So, what's it going to take to beat the Cardinals this weekend? Well. I hate to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say the same thing because we haven't done this like I was saying we need to do, and that is to just play the Seattle standard for good, solid football. You know, we haven't really put a full, complete game since you know, maybe the first game of the season, uh, but uh, we just have to play good. It doesn't even have to be great. We just have to play good and solid, and I think we'll, we will do fine. And what does that mean? It means. You know, no dumb penalties. We had a few of those in this game that led to Lockett being kicked out, for example. Uh, you know, the, the the delay of game, stuff like that. Just can't happen. Can't happen. So, no dumb penalties. Uh, we got to be better on third down. I'm, you know, basically 50% or better on third down on both sides of the ball, meaning we get third stop, third down stops more than 50% of the time, and get uh, conversions 50% or more of the time. I'm not asking for much. Half. Or more and then scoring in the red zone we've got to score more touchdowns and field goals in our in our red zone opportunities it's killing us terrible at that so we've got to improve that and um, stay even or plus in the turnover category now, plus would be better but I'll even just take even that we don't turn the ball over more than they do and again we don't have to be great we just have to be good and we'll win this game it's not that not that difficult, you know. <laughs> Easy for me to say. I'm just standing in the stands, but um, but we've seen them do it before, and it's just kind of more of a mental thing than anything else. So, discipline, solid football. So, what's Arizona going to try to do to beat us? Well, they've obviously been on a winning formula for the last, you know, ten games, at least minus one, and uh, going to the last season, they were on a run that uh, they finished the season off really well. So they are they are hot. No, no denying that. But things that, that Arizona likes to do, they like to they like to blitz, they like to pressure, and they like to send lots of guys and mix things up and confuse, you know, the quarterback and the and the, the lineman and what they're gonna do. And to me, the way you beat that is you gotta just we just gotta stick to what we do best, and that's establish the running game, commit to beast mode, get him at least twenty carries. Read option, let let Russell, you know, do his thing. It's magic happens when those guys you know, get their flow, get their legs going. And then more screen passes to beast mode. I mean, that seems to work great. I haven't yet seen them not, you know, teams shut us down with the screen plays to beast mode. So uh, I hope we see a heavy dose of that. And uh, no more fade routes, please. <laughs> you know, we just don't have, we don't have the gear for that. We don't have those big tall guys to go up and get a ball like that. So um, if you are gonna do it, throw it to a tight end, you know, but not, not a receiver fade route, that's just, Take that page out. <laughs> Garbage, okay? Um, and I don't expect our passing game to, to do much more this this Sunday either because, one, they got a really good secondary, Patrick Peterson and uh, Camardi. Uh, they're not going to give much back there, and if we try to push, force it, you know what's going to happen. So uh, they shouldn't try to push that. What they should try to do is do what I, again, I've been saying all year long, do what everyone else has been doing to us. Short passes to the tight ends, to the middle, 
um, to the running backs, you know, delayed passes to the running backs coming out um, uh, from the backfield. They've been killing us with that, and I think that would work if we do the same thing. So I hope we, I hope we might work a little bit of that in there. I think that will help mix things up and make make Arizona not be so aggressive. So. And then defensively, we gotta we gotta stop the run. You know, our our, our secondary is good, and um, if we stop the run, and force them to, to have to throw more. I think that's gonna play into our hands because with Carson Palmer out and Stanton in, Stanton is a quarterback who likes to throw the ball. You saw it against the Lions last week. He likes to throw the ball deep, and I think that's actually what you want teams to do to us because we're better against that. I think to defend that. And it's the short passes that kill us. Um, look at what the Giants did last week. Remember for a while there, the Giants were dinking and dunking, moving the ball, and then Manning got greedy, thank goodness. And he decided to go for a home run in the corner, and and uh, that led to the interception by Thomas, and pretty much t turned the game around for, uh, at that point, where uh, the Giants pretty much went downhill after that. So I would love to see that, you know, get Stanton, you know, throw a pick or two, you know, going deep, get them all kind of then shine off his game, and then uh, then we could run away with this thing. So, um, but remember, remember we were this. We've the, the mood's not that much different from where we were last year when we played the Cardinals. We played the Cardinals last year. We picked off Carson Palmer four times, and we still lost that game. And the, uh, and the reason was because <clears throat> the um, offense was much like right now, really struggling. You remember we. we we, we blew red zone opportunities, we missed a field goal, um, even with, you know, inside the 10. And um, I, mean, I remember at that time, it was just everybody was really down on the offense, talking the whole talk of pedestrian receiver and all that stuff. And here we are a year later, and it's like deja vu. So we're gonna have to just play a little bit better, you know, in the passing game. But again, it's gotta be smart passing game. We gotta do short stuff. We can't, we're not gonna reinvent ourselves overnight all of a sudden and, and suddenly have these deep threats that came out of nowhere. It's not gonna work like that. So <clears throat> anyway, um, so that's, that's kind of what's in front of us here, folks. No real surprises. I think it's gonna be relatively low scoring. You know, I think, I don't think somebody gets over 20 points. I, uh, Either team gets over 20 points in this game, and it's going to come down to, you know, a final drive that will decide it. And I hope we're the ones who uh, are on the winning side of it. All right, it's got to be. It's going to be a very depressing Thanksgiving, so we need this. We need this to set up that that 49er game. So. There you go. That's my take on what's happening. So I think we can get this done. You know, I'll be there screaming my, screaming my head off, <clears throat> trying to help them out. So if you guys are going, make sure you do the same thing. You know, offense, quiet. Defense, we get loud. It's so simple. And put the hamburger, put your phone down. It's, it's one game, one a week, three hour period. Come on, get with the program if you're in the stands, all right? So many people sitting around talking and not doing anything. We could be so much better crowd-wise. Okay, um, I want to throw in a quick little uh, announcement in here. Um, you might have, some of you might have seen the video that we did where, where Mark Collins and I went to go visit a fellow 12 named John Bachner who was in a car accident and, um, and uh, became paralyzed as a result of it. Well. He's a really cool guy, you know, great to get to know him this past season. And um, we are helping coordinate a fundraising auction, live music, uh, fun event to raise money to help uh, John and his family. And it's through our Facebook page. We have a Facebook page called 12s Helping 12s. And it's called A Night for Johnny B. And it's gonna be uh, on Thursday, December 11th uh, at the Big Whiskey Saloon in Puyallup. And I got Check out the information right here. <clears throat> and uh, it's 12 bucks to get in, and all the money that uh, is raised by it all 100% goes to the family. So, uh, we, you know, like I said, there'll be an auction, so there'll be some prizes that you can win, live music from Mark's band, Latigo Lace, and uh, you know some surprise guests, and I'll be there. <laughs> so it'll be fun, it'll be fun. So I hope those of you who are local around here might uh, be able to come and check it out. 
and uh, and raise money for a good guy, a good good family, and a good cause. What else? Oh, check this shirt. See this? You like that? It's pretty cool. This is a uh, shirt. It's called the Seattle Bird, and uh, this guy named uh, named Don Herbert makes it, designs it, and you can look it up. Uh, just look a, do a search on the Seattle Bird on Facebook, or you can go to this site. Uh, it's etsy.com slash shop slash the Seattle bird and you can get this this cool t-shirt coming at you <laughs> so all right uh, and then finally quick shout out some guys some of you guys have been asking hey you can do a shout out for me so here you go I'm gonna throw a, a few out there shout out Norm Camp shout out to Josh Packer David Maskovsky who's actually a Jets fan but he comes to my channel so I appreciate that fact uh, Jorge Michael Brunel and Jose Castro Ruiz, all the way from Puerto Rico, watching the show. All right, if you guys want to do, um, I think for future things, if you want to do, if you want to shout out, which I'd be happy to do, it's always a lot of fun, uh, email me at norbcam12, uh, uh, norbcam12 at gmail.com. All right, and uh, I'll put your picture up and do a little shout out that way. All righty, um, that's it. Enjoy your Blue Friday. Get your blue, get your hawk on, think Seattle, get positive vibes going for the team because we are going to need it. We gotta beat the Cardinals. It's do or die, must win, playoff time, win or go home, all that kind of stuff. Let's get it done right now, right here, right now. Do it. Take down the Cardinals, all right? And check out my rival's video, all right? Cool. Go Hawks.